Punctum. You may or may not have heard this term before, but you probably experienced it yourself when viewing a photograph. Take a look at this image, and what element, focal point, or subject grabs your attention and evokes an emotional response. Perhaps it's the lady right here staring into the camera. Or perhaps it's the one in the back staring at the camera. Maybe it's the guy who seems to be yelling, or the fact that he's holding box water in his hand. Perhaps nothing evokes an emotional response, which is fine as well. Well, what about this image? Maybe it's the pool, the lights set up, the mountains in the background, maybe the flowers on the tree. Again, maybe it's nothing at all. But what does this have to do with punctum? Punctum is a term used in photography to describe an element in an image that grabs the viewer's attention and evokes an emotional response that may have been unintended or uncontrolled by the photographer. The element could be a specific detail or aspect in the scene with which the viewer can resonate on a deeper level, creating a more impactful image. For example, a photographer could take a photograph of a sunset on a lake, with their main intended subject being the setting sun. However, another viewer could potentially notice some boats on the lake that remind them of their childhood, which would make the image more impactful to them. In fact, this is exactly what happened when I took this photograph. I thought most people would be drawn towards the sunset, as that is the intended emotional response I wanted others to have within the image. However, when I showed a friend of mine this photo online, they commented on the very small boat in the image, and how they used to go out on a boat during sunset time, like in this photo. And that's when I learned about the importance of punctum. Understanding punctum as a photographer is very important, but it's important to note that a photographer cannot intentionally set out to add punctum to their photographs. Rather, it must come naturally because everyone will have a different emotional response to an image. A photographer could try and tell a certain story through an image to evoke a certain emotional response in the viewer, however it's hard to say that 100% of the viewers will feel the same emotions as the photographer set out to evoke. The term punctum was coined by Roland Barthes, a French philosopher, literary critic, and semiotician in his book Camera Lucida. Camera Lucida explores the nature of photography, along with the emotional impact photography could have on its viewers, and the relationship between images and life, death, and memory. The most significant concept in his book is the concept of punctum, as defined earlier. Barthes argues that punctum is not always apparent in a photograph, and that it cannot be easily explained or written out in words. He does not mention this in the book, but I believe it can be a bit like trying to describe love. When we know it, we feel it, but it may be hard to express into words the full scope of the word. He mentioned that punctum is a personal and subjective response to a photograph that is unique to each viewer. Also, in order to understand punctum, one must also understand studium. Along with punctum, studium is another concept that Barthes addresses in Camera Lucida. Studium refers to the general context or subject matter of an image. Studium denotes the cultural, linguistic, and political interpretation of a photograph. It is the information that is made apparent to the viewer, such as the location, the setting, the people, and the objects in the photograph. It allows the viewer to know the necessary information to understand the image. Take a photograph of a group of people at a party as an example. In this example, the studium of the photograph would include the setting of the party, the people at the party, and the general atmosphere and mood of the party. In short, studium adds interest, but in the order of liking, not loving. The punctum, on the other hand, could be a detail such as a specific expression a party member has on their face, or a particular object a viewer notices in the background that evokes a specific memory or emotion for the viewer. Going back to this image, when I first looked at it, I actually drew an emotional response with the boxed water. It reminds me of this place I actually like to get ice cream at, and it was the first place I saw selling boxed water. So when I saw that, it reminded me of the good times I have and have had at the ice cream shop. Notice how most people would recognize that it's a party of some sorts, but not everybody would have the same punctum, and each viewer may have a different emotional response or memory to different elements within the photo. For example, it could be a specific drink they see someone drinking that reminds them of college, it could be a sofa they see in the background that reminds them of one they had in their garage, or it could be a gaming console they notice in the background that reminds them of their childhood. Based on everything discussed, one cannot necessarily create punctum because it will occur naturally and cannot be forced. The chances of you creating an emotional response for the viewer, however, can be influenced by certain techniques you implement. Let's take a look at some of those techniques now. First and foremost, composition plays a crucial role in any photograph. 
The way you implement composition in your image and use certain techniques such as frame within a frame or the rule of thirds can allow you to create a more visually appealing image that emphasizes certain elements within the photo. By emphasizing elements in your photo, the viewer has a greater chance of experiencing punctum. The second way you can influence the emotional response of the viewer is by playing with contrast. Playing with contrast in your photograph can create a strong visual impact. You can use contrasting colors such as blue and orange, light and shadow, or textures to create and add contrast to your images. The third way is to play around with depth of field. If you really want to emphasize a certain subject, you can use a shallow depth of field to focus on that subject while blurring out the background. By doing this, you will draw attention to a particular subject while simultaneously creating a sense of depth. The final way to increase the chances of creating punctum in your images is through timing. The timing you have when taking a photograph can make or break the photo. Capturing a decisive moment or a fleeting expression could add an emotional impact and add that extra spark to an otherwise dull looking image. Ultimately, you cannot create punctum in your photograph, but you can increase the odds of somebody experiencing punctum, or an emotional response, while viewing your photograph. On the topic of creating punctum, although we know we can't explicitly create punctum, let's also look at how you can influence punctum and create an emotional response based on different types of photography. In portrait photography, an emotional response can be influenced by capturing a subject's unique features or expressions that would reveal their true personality. Out of this, someone could then either get an emotional response from their personality or not. In landscape photography, an emotional response can be drawn by the moment and vast scene that you are able to capture. A unique element they notice in the scene or a specific landmark could draw the viewer's attention and it could create an emotional response for them. For example, it could be a lone tree in the middle of the vast landscape, or the light shining down covering the mountains during sunset. In street photography, capturing the decisive moment is your best chance of being able to evoke an emotional response from the viewer. For example, you could capture a decisive moment that reveals the complexity of urban life, such as unique interactions between two or more people. In wildlife photography, an emotional response can be created by capturing a certain behavior or interaction between animals that reveal the complexity of mother nature. For example, capturing an image of a mother caring for her young or a predator hunting its prey. I want to end this video on punctum with a consideration of whether we as photographers should be considering punctum in every image we take. I believe we should always be taking photos with the intent of telling a story. Since it is hard to say what emotional response the viewer will have toward the image and the punctum he or she experiences, our focus should really be on storytelling. While punctum can add an emotional dimension to a photograph, it's not always necessary or appropriate to experience deeply in every image. Some photos may simply be intended to document a scene or moment without any particular emotional response. In other cases, the subject matter or context may not lend itself to a punctum. That being said, for those photographers who do wish to incorporate punctum into their work, it can be a powerful tool for creating a connection with the viewer and conveying a deeper meaning or message. Ultimately, whether or not punctum exists in an image is up to the viewer. We can incorporate elements into the image to steer a viewer toward a certain emotional response, but it's up to the viewer to decide how they feel about the image based on where they're at in their life. In conclusion, I hope you enjoyed this guide on punctum and learned more about it. When I first learned about the term in Roland Barthes, it allowed me to look at pictures and images in a different light. It put into words what I had felt at times when looking at a particular picture. I believe experiencing punctum in an image isn't just an emotion, it's a mirror reflecting who you are as a person and the experiences you've had in life. Thanks for watching.